Hello guys, today's topic is English paper 2, uh, June exam. This is the first additional language. So I'm just going to be answering this question paper. I need you guys to listen very carefully so that you may benefit. So I'm going to show uh, the answers on the screen, obviously. I'm going to show the answers on the screen. And if the question paper is not visible, you can go ahead and download the question paper on Google. So let's go. Uh, section A and remember guys uh, I want to say the rules first uh, answer questions from any two sections so you have to choose two sections only you have to choose two sections only so you don't answer all of the questions here so I'm going to choose the novel and the poetry and the drama I'm just gonna do uh, the my children my Africa because many people do it so let's go you don't choose three guys you don't choose three sections you choose only two so let's go i'm gonna start with the kai the beloved country by alan Patron. but if you don't do the kai the beloved country just skip the video where i'm answering the my children my africa don't waste your time watching the kai the beloved country or, or unless you want to take your chances and answer it so let's go 1.1.1 you can go ahead, pause the video, and read. Um, me, I'm just going to go straight to the question. 1.1.1. Uh, choose a description from column B that matches a name in column A. Write only the letter A or E next to the question numbers, uh, which is A, uh, Richard Bering. We, which one is this one? Um, this one is C, Seventh Knocked, Unconscious, during an attempt robbery. B. Otta Jovis. Who is Otta Jovis? What, what do we know about him? Otta Jovis is E. Well-known engineering in the city of Johannesburg. C. Absalom Kumalo. Who is Absalom Kumalo? A young man who spent time in the reformatory. It's a young man who spent time in the reformatory. Uh, D. Matthew Kumalo. Matthew Kumalo, which one is this one? B, it's a accomplice to the murder of other Jovis. So, let's go and answer the questions here. So, in order to benefit from the video, guys, you need to pause the video and try to answer the questions for yourself first. Pause the video and try to answer for yourself. As you can see, the, I think the question paper is visible. I'm zooming in. I think it's visible. You can just pause and answer for yourself first. So let's go. Um, describe the setting of this extract. The setting is the house of, the, of Stephen Kumalo and his wife before he leaves for Johannesburg after he receives a letter from Reverend Msimang when they are counting their savings. 1.1.3 Why has the money been saved for ST charts in lines 8 and 9 and the other for ST charts. Why? The money is intended to send their son Absalom to ST charts. 1.1.4 refer to line 11. Let me see and I shall go. Uh, what tone would Stephen Kumalo use in this line? Uh, this is hesitant and uncertain. He's not sure. Um, then we have B. Why would Stephen Kumalo use this tone in this line? Stephen is unsure as he does not really want to use their savings to go to Johannesburg. 1.1.5 line uh, 18 to 20, refer to line 18 to 20. Then she said that I'm mute. Identify the figure of speech used in these lines. This is a metaphor. Uh, B. Uh, explain the figure of speech as used in the extract. Miss Kumalo silently bears her pain in the same way that Oxen and Mute bear their pain silently so we are going here uh, what does this extract reveal about stephen kumalo's character uh, substantiate your answer so it's a you need a little bit more explanation stephen kumalo is considered or caring he does not want to use all the money that has been saved for a stove or, or you can just say Seth stephen kumalo is sensitive he apologizes to his wife for hurting her or you can just say Stephen Kumalo is devoted and he goes to church to pray. That's it. So, 1.1.7. Refer to the novel 
as a whole. Absalom Kumalo can be pictured. Discuss your view. So this is your view. You are discussing your view here. So it's about uh, your view. It's your view, guys. It's about your opinion. Uh, you can say, um, let's say you are you choose a yes. Um, let's say you say yes. Yes, you can explain by saying Absalom's unemployment forces him to to join Johannes Pafuri and Matthew Kumalo to the Bagel Otter's home. And you can say no, Absalom was raised with good values and should have been guided by that. So you will see the other answers on the screen. Now I'm going to 1.2. 1.2.1, uh, you can just pause the video and read uh, the extract here if, if you want. Pause the video and read the extract. So let's go. Refer to line 1 and 2. Now it was of this nature. Choose the correct answer to complete the following sentence. Write only the letter A or D next to the question number. 1.2.1 in the answer book. Stephen Kumalo goes up the mountain because he wants to pray for. Uh, which one is this one? It's C. His son who is in Johannesburg. 1.2.2. Explain why James Jovis tells Stephen Kumalo that they are well met. Line 6. Which is line 6. Why? Jovis wants to give Stephen a letter. To share the good news that he is going to assist with the rebuilding of the church. So, yeah. 1.2.3 refer to line 11. Kumalo could only uh, wait in him. What does this line tell us about Kumalo's state of mind? Substantiate your answer. What does this line tell us? Uh, Stephen Kumalo is uh, stunned or happy or excited as he cannot. Believe the generosity of James Jovis offer to build a new church. Uh, 1.2.4. I uh, refer to line 13 and the plans will what uh, you desire. How else does James Jovis help the people of Ndocheni? How else does James Jovis help the people of Ndocheni? James uh, Jovis donates milk for the children at Indochini, he sends an agricultural demonstrator to help with the building of a dam. Explain the irony in James Jovis helping the people of Indochini. James Jovis has lived close to Indochini his entire life without helping the people. It is only after his son Otta's death that he understands their uh, plight. Or oh, there's another answer on the screen. Uh, 1.2.5. Why does Stephen Kumalu consider James Jovis leaving Dojeni as frightening and desolating? Which is line 18. Why? James Jovis or uh, Jovis's leaving Dojeni will result in Stephen feeling a sense of loss, isolation, or abandonment because the death of their sons has forged a bond between them. Or oh, there's another answer on the screen. 1.2.6. Why is the following statement false? The church in Dojeni needs to be rebuilt because it is too small. Why? The church in Dojeni needs to be rebuilt because the roof is leaking. That's why it's false. 1.2.7 One of the themes in the Kai, the beloved county, in is relationship that are broken. Discuss the theme. Um, the th let's discuss the theme, guys. Uh... The relationship between Stephen and his brother John becomes strained, broken due to John's infidelity. And the relationship between James Jovis and his son Otter is broken because James has not made an effort to understand his son's political view. Absalom remains indifferent by showing no real remorse and does not confide his father or in his father. So, um, this is 1.2.7. 1.2.8 refer to the novel as a whole. Otto Jovis is an admirable character. Discuss your view. As you can see, it's discuss your view. It's about discussing your view. What do you think about it? So, if you say yes, you can say Otto Jovis was an advocate for justice for black South Africans. If you say, uh, if you say yes, again, he, he ran a boys club. For the black youth with an aim of helping them stay out of crime. So if you say no, you can say Otta Jovis 
does not have a close relationship with his father and does not do anything to better it. There are other answers on the screen. So now I'm going to uh, the my children, my Africa. I'm going there, guys, now. My children, my Africa, because uh, many people are doing it. And by the way, guys, if you are new to the channel, just know that I've already done an explanation of these topics. Uh, the Kai, the Beloved, and My Children, My Africa. That's why I'm not explaining here much. Uh, you can go ahead, subscribe to the channel, and go to the description. And check out the explanation, guys. Check out the novel explanation. I've explained multiple times about the Kai, Beloved, and the My Children, My Africa. So it will be beneficial for you if you want to know about the novel and the drama. So now we are going to question four, guys. My children, my Africa. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, 4.1.1. 4.1.1. Choose the description from column B that matches the name in column A. You already know that, guys. Uh, A, Tami Mbikwana. Uh, which one is this one? Try to pause the video and answer all the questions, then you listen to me. Uh, this is D. Uh, has lost hope in the political educational system. And B. Isabel Dyson. This is A. A voice of hope at the end of the play. And uh, C. Which is uh, Anela Nyalatia. Which one is this one? This one is E. Believes that the communication and education will bring about positive change and d which is david uh, gobella uh, this one is actually b comes yearly to give the standard tense his usually pep talk okay we are beginning now 4.1.2 describe the setting of this extract the setting is at zolile high or mr miss Classroom number one, classroom during the inter-schools debate. Uh, 4.1.3, referred to line seven, correction, the women, uh, uh, the women intuitive than men. What these lines tell us about Isabel's state of mind? Uh, substantiate your answer. What this line tells us, guys. Isabel is emphatic or decisive as she firmly contends that women and men are equal. 4.1.4 How does Mr. M later use the dictionary, opens and reads uh, on the table, line 14 and 15, to prove his point of view to Tammy? How? Mr. M shows Tammy that the dictionary is more powerful than a stone or violence as the ways can enter people's heads and bring about change. 4.1.5 refer to line 20 to 22, uh, enthusiasm for your but no harness. Uh, identify the figure of speech used in these lines. Simil, that's a simil. And uh, explain the figure of speech used uh, in this extract. An undisciplined behavior during the debate serves no purpose. In the same way, a donkey without a harness cannot pull a cart. Okay. 4.1.6, what does this extract reveal about Mr. M's character? Substantiate your answer. Okay, uh, what does it uh, reveal? Mr. M is orderly. He expects Tammy and Isabel to do things for the book or he is sensible. He realizes that their undisciplined behavior will cause chaos. And there are other answers on the screen. 4.1.7 refer to the play as a whole. Isabel is an admirable character. Discuss your view. This is your view. We can discuss your view. Uh, okay, let's say you said yes. Isabel breaks tradition when she goes to Zolile High for debate. Let's say you said no. You can say Isabel does not understand why Tammy wants to join the boycott instead of participating in the quiz. So uh, you can see other answers on the screen. Okay, 4.2, guys. You can pause the video and try to read on the screen and tell me. And then when you're done, you can just continue. Okay, we are beginning, guys. Uh, explain why Tommy goes to see Mr. M when they meet for the last time. Why? Tommy wants to warn Mr. M about approaching mob. They know he gave their names to the police. 
he wants to convince Mr. M to join the boycott. 4.2.2. Why are the police looking for Tammy? Are the police looking for you? Which is line 6. Tammy is part of the comrades who are responsible for the strikes and boycotts in the township. He is present when Mr. M is killed. Uh, 4.2.3 choose the correct answer to complete the following sentence write only the letter a or t next to the question number and the police will look uh, for Tammy in Cape Town where are you please they'll look line 9 and 10 because he's there okay so we are about to finish up this one which is uh, b parents leave parents leave yeah where are you place their look so this is parents leave and you, this is the correct answer so uh, 4.2.4 4.2.4 refer to line 12 if you were the director of display what will you tell isabel to do when saying these lines state two actions okay to where uh, isabel should have her hands outstretched or raised uh, she should shrug her shoulders. Okay. Uh, 4.2.5. Explain the irony in Mr. M being killed. I don't want uh, uh, killed Mr. M, which is line 17 to 18. Uh, Mr. M thinks he is doing the children a favor by giving their names to the Department of Education. He thinks it will bring them back to the class to teach them, but it causes his death. Okay. 4.2.6 refer to line 20. I know thing. Believe me. What tone would Tammy use uh, in this line? Confident. Why would Tammy use this tone in this line? He has made up his mind to join the movement. He assures Isabel that he has made the right decision to join the movement. 4.2.7. Why is the following statement false? Isabel goes to Cook House to pay her respect to Mr. M. Okay. She goes to the Wapedet Spec Pass. That's where. Okay. 4.2.8. One of the themes in My Children, My Africa is sacrificed. Discuss this theme. Okay. 4.2.8. Uh, Isabel sacrifices her time by practicing for the literary quiz. Mr. M sacrifices his life when he refuses to join the boycott. Okay. Uh, 4.2.9 refer to the drama as a whole Tammy has a valid reason for joining the school boycott discuss the view okay here you discuss the view uh, if you say yes you can say Tammy is dissatisfied with the inferior Bantu education they receive or if you say no you can say compromises his chances to further his studies so you just only have to give two so this depends on what you say uh, you can also say there are other uh, reasons on the screen I've showed them. I've put them on the screen. So now we are going to the poem now. Poem. Uh, we are going to the poems, guys. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to answer the poems. Okay. Poetry. You can go ahead, pause and read the poet. You can go ahead. And I've also done poems on my channel. You can go and watch the video if you want to know the answers of the poem or know about the poems. Uh, 6.1.1, read the poem as a whole. All of you know about this. Uh, let me begin. A, jagged, which is line 2. This goes with B, sharp edges. And B, epitence. This goes with uh, D, which is insulting words. And C, corrode. Corrode goes with E, slowly destroying. D, venomous. Uh, this goes with A, deadly poisonous. Um, 6.1.2. Choose the correct answer to complete the following sentence. Write only the letter A or D next to the question number. Uh, refer to line 1 and 3. We do not trench between us. Words that dictate the trench is an example of C, personification. 6.1.3. What? Uh, does the poet compare hurtful words in stanzas two to three? Stage two things. Uh, what does it do compare? The poet compares hurtful words to sharp spokes of wheel 
and acid. Uh, 6.1.4 is the word toast used literally or figuratively in line 11. Substitute your answer. Okay. It is used figuratively as words are not thrown but spoken. The speaker uh, utters words carelessly, randomly, like you will throw something without aiming. Uh, okay. This is it. Uh, then we are going to... Uh, 6.1.5 refer to line 14 from your uh, serpentine tongue. Uh, identify the figure of speech used uh, in this line. Okay, metaphor. Explain the figure of speech as used in the poem. The effect of the hurtful or abusive words is compared to the damaging effect of the poisonous snake's bite, which is just and harmful and deadly. It's just as harmful, guys, and deadly. Not an. 6.1.6 .6, refer to stanza 5. What tone does the speaker use in this stanza? Uh, gentle, kind, or uplifting? B. Explain why the speaker uses this tone in the stanza. Uh, the speaker believes that positive words act as a buffer against the cruelty of the world. 6.1.7 uh, The speaker convinces the reader about the effects of the words. Discuss the view. So here you can give your own opinion actually. Okay, uh, you can say, um, if you say yes, okay, you can say, the speaker uses imaginary like trenches to show how hurtful uh, words can cause division among people. He uses strong adjectives like acidic to illustrate how sarcasm can cause insensitivity. Okay, if you say no, you can say the figures of speech used are not easily understood by everyone and therefore might not be convincing. Words can only affect one if one allows it. As the speaker says, there is no room in this cup for helpful words. Okay. So, now we are going to another poem. This is still I arise. So, you can pause the video and read the poem. Or you have it, guys, on your notes or your booklet. You have it. You can just take it out and read it from there. So I'll assume you guys are done reading the poem. Okay. What does stanza 1 tell us about the speaker's state of mind? Substantiate your answer. The speaker is assentive or proud. And no matter how hard people try, the government tries to break her spirit, she will not be defeated. Uh, refer to line 7, cause I walk, got oil wells. Identify the figure of speech used in this line. This is a simul. Explain the figure of speech as used in the poem. The speaker walks as if she has the words wealth in her pocket. It emphasizes her strength and defiance. Uh, 6.2.3 Explain the irony in Does my haughtiness uh, my backyard line 17 to 20. I hope I spelled this word right guys. Um, okay, the answer is her oppressors expect her to be defeated and broken yet she refuses to be downtrodden and is self-assured and self-confident um, proud of whom she is okay uh, 6.2.4 give the meaning of or you may shoot with your eyes uh, line 21 to 22 in this context of the poem okay her oppressors can insult her use harsh words and they can stare at her in the cruel manner uh, Six point two point five. Uh, using your words or your own words, describe leaving behind night clear eyes. Okay, your own words. Uh, using your own words, the speaker moves forward and leaves her pain and sorrow behind. She sees a bright and better future. So, six point two point six. Why is the following statement false? The speaker addresses her ancestors in this poem. Why is it false? The speaker addresses her oppressors. One of the themes in Still I Arise uh, is strength and endurance. Discuss the theme. Uh, okay. The speaker has shown strength and resilience to overcome her past. The repetition of uh, the phrase Still I Rise is a reflection that no matter what comes her way, 
she will stand up and try again. Throughout the poem, the speaker shows that she will not give up despite uh, prejudice. 6.2.8 um, The speaker's confidence can be admired. Uh, okay, if you said yes, uh, this is a discuss your view. If you said yes, you can say uh, the speaker boldly uh, addresses her oppressors. Uh, she floats her positive attributes and apologetically she will not be deterred by their humiliating words and their hatred and if you say no you can say the speaker is arrogant when she refers to her sassiness and bold and feisty her pride uh, is a characteristic that cannot be admired the images of oil wells and diamonds evoke a sense of nobishness and bragging so this is a discuss your view so guys, um, I've answered the question paper. Make sure you subscribe and go to the description if you want an explanation of poems and novel and dramas. I've already done an explanation, so I won't repeat myself again. So guys, make sure you subscribe, you like the video, you share the video. Peace.